But first, heavily redacted documents have been tabled in the Senate that show thousands of Palestinian visa holders were referred to ASIO for security checks only after they were granted special temporary visitor visas. This again goes to show just how little certainty we can have when it comes to this cohort of visa recipients. Considering there were no rigorous face-to-face -face tests or interviews, no biometric testing prior to the granting of visas, not to mention the fact that some may have already been in Australia before they were referred to ASIO. Joining me now, Shadow Immigration Minister Dan Tien. Well, thank you for your time, Dan. Since March, ASIO say they've assessed all onshore and offshore visa holders. But prior to that period, that's not the case. So we're talking about six months of serious exposure. And that was always the opposition's concern, wasn't it? Absolutely, it was always our concern. You're meant to do the proper security vetting before people arrive in the country. And what's clear, and we've got it in the data that's been released, is not only had the Palestinians arrived without that occurring, but also some of them had already claimed asylum. So even if there had have been security red flags, how the government was going to deal with those people who are already here, who had already claimed asylum, if there were security mm. red flags, heaven only knows. Once again, it shows that this was rushed, and we know it was rushed because Ed Husik said it was rushed. The proper security checks weren't put in place, and it's just pure luck, it would seem, that we haven't seen anyone uh, delivering a, a red security flag uh, from ASIO. And we are very, very fortunate that that hasn't been the case. But it just goes to show one fundamental thing. Uh, Labor can't be trusted on national security. Dan, the documents show that at least seven had their visa applications refused on shore. So what happens in this case? Because we've had Tony Burke say before, oh, we can't send these people back to a war zone. So where are these seven now? Well, it's a very good question and one that needs that we need Tony Burke to answer. And it's something that we will be following up on because, as you know, Peter, when we asked all these questions in the parliament, Anthony Albanese refused to answer them and refused to provide the Australian people with the detail. Now we've got these briefs. Uh, we will now put the questions again to the Prime Minister because uh, they, you know, the Australian people need to know the answers to these questions. And if the Prime Minister won't answer them, then they have every right to know that fundamental premise is correct. Labor can't be trusted when it comes to our national security. Dan, this is like death by a thousand cuts, though. I mean, you have to sort of bludgeon them in the parliament to get a couple of answers up. Even then, you know, often things change. You go to estimates, that's when we found out originally that they weren't being checked, that some of these visas were allocated in about an hour. Then we get this dump of redacted documents. We find that there are people getting to Australia without a security check. Then we find that seven, at least seven, get refused by ASIO. Well, where the hell are they? Are they locked up? Have they been sent to a third country? We can't send them back to Gaza. And we know about 70% of the cohort in Australia, about 1,300 or so, they've already applied to stay here forever. They've got rights to Medicare, rights to a whole lot of other eligibility. I also know they, on this particular tourist visa class, Dan Tien, get access to health and medical care that no other tourist who comes to Australia gets. Now, where are the answers from Labor about this? Where's the, popular, where's the, um, the press conference from the Prime Minister or the Minister just being very frank and open with us? Well, I don't think we'll get it. But one thing you can be assured of, Peter, that we will keep asking the questions. Um, you know, when it came to Andrew Giles and Claire O'Neill, that we just made sure that we asked the right questions, continue to ask the right questions, and we didn't. when we didn't get the answers, we made sure we continued to expose them. Well, we're going to keep doing that with the Prime Minister because the
the Prime Minister was asked a series of questions in the Parliament around this. He didn't like it, and we now know why he didn't like it. Uh, we've obviously seen Andrew Giles and Claire O'Neill replaced by Tony Burke. Uh, so we'll also put the questions to him. And we will pursue them, uh, and we will continue to pursue them, because there's one job that the government has above all else and that is to keep the Australian people safe. And if we don't think they're doing that, then we will go after them. And we will make sure that we keep the attention and the focus on this, because if they have put national security at risk, the Australian people deserve to know about it. The government said it was going to cut the immigration numbers, Dan Tien. We already know they're at 98 per cent of their target for this financial year. There's still another quarter to go. They've also let the population hit 27 million last week. That's the ABS official statistics. Are they lying to us about cutting the population? I think they are. They, they said that they were going to meet their commitments and it's absolutely clear that they're not going to. And the important point to remember here is that that is adding to the pressures on Australian families and on small business in this country. Because the Reserve Bank has said if the government cannot get immigration under control, it's going to continue to put upward pressure on inflation, on housing, on rents, on the cost of living, and that will keep interest rates higher for longer. So Jim Chalmers has now admitted that they won't reach their target. Now, just remember how high this is. The government is on track to bring in well over a million people in two years. We have never seen numbers like this before. Claire O'Neill said that she had it under control and that she was going to make sure they reached their targets. We've now got Jim Chalmers saying they're not going to do it. It's another complete and utter mess. And the sad thing about this is it's Australian families and businesses that are paying the price. Not wrong, Dan Tan, thank you.